Aaron Kawalecki, thanks for so, so thanks so much for being on on with us. Um, I want to welcome you to the podcast. You know, I'll, I'll start here. I think you know you've been part of the National Advertising Challenge as a judge a number of times, and you're. I feel like you're one of our go-to jury members, um, and I think I think that's because you have a very balanced approach between creative and and strategy, and uh, and it's kind of reinforced. Uh, by Marquetta Crivy, who who says, as I quote, uh, you have a laser sharp focus on doing what's right for a brand, which sounds amazingly uh, responsible of you. Um, but I think <laughs> <laughs> I think it's translated into uh, your very, very balanced approach to uh, to judging creativity. So um, welcome. And I thought I thought we'd start there. Like, uh, where did you get this this strategic sensibility in your approach to creativity? Um, I mean, I've had the benefit of working with, uh, oh, first of all, that's very nice. <laughs> um, but I've, I've had the benefit of working with some very smart people and working for some very smart people, uh, Marquetta included. Um, I also think that if you're not taking your client's needs into account, uh, you're, you're probably in the wrong business. Um, and I also think that, you know, building, building trust with someone is, you know, mm, the only way that they will eventually take risks with you or do something maybe more meaningful or interesting. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Why I mean, do you I, one of, sorry, no, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say, you know, uh, in terms of my career, I can remember being frustrated at times with, with sometimes with clients who didn't think that we had their best interests in mind. And I, I want to say that most, for the most part, creative people do want to do what's best for the brand. Um, of course, you're going to have people who really want to, to do something, an idea that maybe um, pushes the boundaries a little bit and might get disappointed in that regard. But why do you think that, that creative sometimes or why do you think clients are sometimes a little bit cagey when it comes to trusting us as, as we try to do their uh, communications? Yeah, I mean, you know, trust is something you earn, obviously. Um, and so I think that some people uh, naturally, you know, have other people's best interests at heart and some people don't. Um, there are all kinds of reasons, I think, why um, clients might feel that agencies uh, put their own interests ahead of ahead of clients. Um, I think some do, and I think, as, as you said, I think most people don't. I think actually most of the people that do this are, uh, you know, uh, conscientious, <laughs> you know, <laughs> smart people. Um, but yeah, I think it, you know, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, but I also would say that um, you know, I've worked at places where, uh, you know, the goals are not always uh, to do the best thing for your client. You know, it's, sometimes it's about awards, which it also is um, important and fair, um, depending on your your reason for wanting to wanting to wanting to win them. I mean, uh, if it's because you want to do the best work for your client, that's great. Um, but yeah, I was. This is this is really deviated into. The area. <laughs> <laughs> Here I go, but I mean, no. I, so I, I would say that, um, yeah, anyway, I categorically agree with you that most people are in this for the right reason. Yeah, I mean, you've you've had some experience judging other shows, I'm going to assume. And um, and uh, I had Philippe Garneau on not long ago. And um, and the one thing I mentioned to him about creative shows now is that um, it used to be that you would open up the books and you would see work that you've, you've actually come into contact with and interacted with. Uh, and it seems now more and more you open the books, you see great ideas and great creativity, but but um, you also you also have never seen it before in your life. Um, and um, I'm not sure what that means for the creative shows. Like, uh, I don't know if if there should be a show that's basically, you know, these are big brands doing big creative work. It seems a little bit more niche now. Has that been your experience when you've judged other shows? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, yeah, I do think that um, it is harder now. I mean, speaking maybe in Canada, I think it um, clients for different reasons that we could go into uh, are a bit more conservative maybe than they used to be. Um, so I do think that for a lot of agencies, when you want to do interesting work, that sometimes it is uh, more on the pro bono side. Um, I also think that probably is a net good. Um, you know, that uh, even if the motivation is not 100% um, altruistic, that I think probably that's that's a good thing, that people are doing work for 
um, for you know organizations uh, that are doing good things. Um, but yeah, no, definitely, uh, I I agree that um, that a lot of it seems to not be for your your let's call them bread and butter clients, and I I don't um, I don't think that's you know true across the board, but uh, but yeah. Yeah, I think there's this balance between exercising creativity and doing what's responsible and and um, for brands and and I mean you've risen through the ranks now. You're an ECD at DDB. Um, I think I think we we all there's always going to be that pressure of um, of the creative side and wanting to get work into the into the award shows um, and also building businesses. What's that been like as you as you've ascended in your career? I mean, um, I think it's safe to say that um, when you first start out, you're very starry eyed about creativity and you want to get in the shows and in the books and get notoriety that way. But um, but as with seniority comes responsibility and the, the real task of building businesses. How have you felt that in your career as you've ascended? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I don't know that okay so um i studied economics i always um i always liked business um i don't know that uh that they've ever been totally separate for me mm-hmm. i mean i definitely also you know wanted to win awards and kind of fell in love with the um creative side of the industry first but mm-hmm. um yeah i would say that for me and i, I know that this sounds pretty self-serving but i would say that um, I have always just been very interested in the other side as well. So that's been something for me that I've, that I've welcomed. I think a lot of people have a hard time moving from um, being a creative to being a creative director. Um, I would say for me that I had a lot to learn and I still have a lot to learn. I'm a very new ACD. Um, but I also, uh, again, I, I, kind of like, I kind of like the aspect of thinking about, um, thinking about a client's business uh, sort of as a whole, um, and trying to be creative in that way. So um, it's a good question, uh, and but I, but again, for me, they never felt separated. I think um, I think everybody can recognize that there's a different skill set when it comes to creating work and then moving to the judging side of work, particularly if you're managing teams. Um, You've not only got feelings that you have to uh, you have to manage and people that you have to manage, but also to tread lightly and to guide the creative process rather than taking over. Because I think we've all worked with people who have who've kind of said that's a nice idea, but I think this idea would be better. Um, um, that's a that's a learned skill. And um, I don't know what what what's happened with you, whether or not you were thrust into that kind of position where all of a sudden you were managing teams and helping them along. But how have you found that? You know, uh, lots of people are different and lots of people respond to different things um, and you need to be able to get the best out of them. What's that been like for you? Yeah, I think, um, so for me, I think one of the hardest things that I had to learn and probably one of the most important traits uh, as a creative director was to be um, more decisive. Because I think for, you know, when, when you, when you're doing work as a creative person, you want to come up with as much as possible and throw things against the wall. And you have somebody there to help figure out what's terrible and what, you know, what maybe has some potential. And so I think in the beginning, I found it very hard um, to throw things out or uh, maybe to direct people uh, clearly enough because, you know, you sort of see the potential in something and you want to see where it goes. And then, you know, uh, you're not doing anyone a favor by sending them in 10 different directions. So for me, one of the, actually one of the things that was very um, helpful and it sounds very simple, um, but, but for whatever reason helped me a lot was my, so my current boss, who's our CCO and CEO, um, so Brent Choi, um, one of the things that he said to me early on was that um, if you're 80% sure, make the decision. Um, you don't have to be 100% sure about an idea. And I think that, um, I think for me, that was a that was a good <laughs> piece of advice, and probably also um, saved you know creative teams some time um, because again I, you know it's it is, sometimes sometimes it is hard because you know lots of ideas have potential and it really is a matter of choosing um, you know choosing the best ones and they may not always be the best ones but it's it's better to make a decision 
So that, yeah, that was something that I, that I, that I found hard in terms of making that transition and managing different personalities is yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not so hard and not, not something certainly uh, that I've you know, trained in. Uh, so that, yeah, that there's definitely a, a learning curve there. And I think obviously now with, uh, with ha what's happening, everyone working at home, it's just added a whole other, other layer because um, obviously some people are handling it really well and some people are um, maybe even happy to be at home and some people, you know, are having a much bigger challenge and that's real um, and that's fair. And so figuring out how to, how to help, um, but also to make sure the work gets done because we also need to, you know, uh, keep doing things for our clients and keep the agency working. So um, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, I think I feel I think this is week nine that most of us have been kind of, you know, still observing um, these new rules of working and, and um, not sure where DDB is at or what what lies on the horizon there. It feels like things are starting to open up. And, and I imagine um, I imagine anyone at these companies is, is beginning to think about how that will look and how they're going to roll it out. I don't know how big your office is. I'm going to imagine it's relatively large. It's big, actually. So all, I mean, all the in Toronto. So there's, I mean, there's Toronto, M Montreal, Vancouver, Edmonton. Edmonton is um, killing it. They're actually relatively big. Um, so the Toronto office with all of the divisions, and I can go into what that means if you want, <laughs> um, is um, roughly 100 people. So not huge, certainly. Um, you know, obviously, GDB is a big network. But um, no, the Toronto office is not is not huge um and so yeah again i think i would just say that there's a very big spectrum of um feelings <laughs> from people around what's happening uh and also that you know um you know we are starting to talk about plans for reopening um but that's also not going to happen you know I, certainly not within the next month um and i'm sure you've heard you know all the big tech companies are announcing that people you know will work from home until 2021 um, I don't think we're going to be in that in that boat, but also I, you know, I realize that advertising is not an essential service in any way. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Um, I can't imagine we'll be, you know, the first industry to go back. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, you know, I definitely find it hard. Sorry, you were going to say something. I was going to say, you know, like we we all know that when there's these economic downturns, the the rule of thumb is to not stop um, communicating and you know and advertising agencies have always found themselves in this position when there is an economic downturn there's clients who are looking at ad spend and and, and what they're paying in fees and they they some decide to cut that first um, but we all know that generally speaking the brands that continue to communicate kind of wind up on top or get at least a head start when when things turn around how have you found you know the DDB's portfolio of of clients? Has everyone been on board with that kind of thinking, or have you had a few that have sort of steered away? I mean, I think people are generally, meaning our marketing clients are generally pretty on board with that and understand that. But I also think, you know, in depending on the sector, different people are really feeling, um, you know, feeling the pressure to cut costs. Like that's just so even if, even though they they might know that. Um, they they need to keep communicating in order to you know recover and all those things. Um, again, I think for some of our clients it's been hard. We also are lucky in the, in the sense that we don't um, you know we don't we're not relying on an airline a client you know or um, you know like a major eat in restaurant chain or you know um, so there are um, again I would say that many of our clients are actually. Uh, still, still doing a lot of work. I think the biggest, um, I think the biggest thing for us is that when, uh, when this whole thing happened, because it's such a major cultural shift, um, the a lot of the thinking that we were basing the work on had shifted, uh, you know, very quickly, and so we had to go back and revisit, um, you know, and rethink and redo a lot of a lot of the work. So, um, so it was, it's led to a bit of a, <laughs> it's led to a bit of a bananas um, time. Uh, in terms of the amount of work that that needs to be done, but again, that's also um, we. I feel very lucky to be able to keep working and keep working from home. Um, and I, I know a lot of people uh, have been affected by this already, and I'm sure there's more to come. Um, so again, really overall, I, just, I yeah, I, I do feel very lucky that we've had very few layoffs. Um, you, you know, um, yeah, we've we've been lucky. 
That's great. I, I um, uh, when this all began and I started to talk to people about um, communicating during this time, of course, we saw a huge wave of COVID related communications off the top. Uh, mo- most of them, you know, some some cool ideas and um, and for the most part, most of them um, kind of communicating to everyone that we're in this together. Um, feel a little bit of fatigue that's happening with that kind of communication and brands who continue to do that now in this phase seems a little bit, as one uh, guest put it, tone deaf as it relates to it. Um, and I think the most uh, one, one of the smarter um, uh, things that I've heard is that there's, you know, we see it as kind of three phases. There is the first phase where everyone came out and acknowledged in sort of solidarity. Yeah. The second phase was, hey, not time to sell quite yet. Um, but, you know, what kind of value can we drive here um, that still sees us as kind of benevolent? And then and then this this third phase, which is, you know, prepping people to become consumers when the time is soon. Right. What's been eye opening for you during this time? And um, would you say that that those three phases are kind of accurate or is there another fourth phase that we're missing here? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, for, like from all the all the reading that I've done, all the things smart people that I work with tell me, I think that's true. I also think that, um, uh, I think there also is like a desire for just return to normalcy. So as opposed to, um, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't know if we're in phase two or phase three, probably phase two, because everyone's still kind of working from home and lockdown mm-hmm. still happening. Um, so I think, we, yeah, you're right. We passed the point where people really want that emotional, like we're all, all in it together message. I do think it had a place and I applaud the brands that got those messages out quickly. Um, Cause I think in the beginning, uh, you know, they, they, they did get attention for their, for their clients because again, it felt, it felt right and it felt current. And then of course you see every other brand doing the same thing. And so by virtue of um, being the same, you know, it's, you're not going to get talked about in the same way. Um, and I think, so I, anyway, so I think now uh, we are for sure in a phase where people don't want the somber message. And I think the sort of more, um you know uh like let's let's be a bit more optimistic like those messages are uh are also coming at us uh in in another slew um Mm. and then i i I am looking forward to the day where we kind of get back to talking about um you know the talking about what our what our clients do that in a way that doesn't have to reflect uh covid i mean i think the other thing is you always of course want to reflect the culture in the moment um in any way that you can but um but yeah again you know really just having everybody do the same thing will make your messages less effective for obvious reasons um and i and i do think that we probably are getting into phase uh getting into phase three more um and that makes me happy (laughs) i also know that you know the you know the other side of things though and i think this is one reason our clients are still of course nervous aside from the, the aside from the real economic issues that will impact i think everyone in different ways um but also you know we we don't know like you know things things could get better over the summer and we could be hit again in the fall um i i won't go into all the you know depressing <laughs> things coming out of uh you know we know that there's potentially uh you know potentially COVID has morphed into this thing that's damaging kids in new york like there's you know anyway i think we just don't know what's going to happen so um you know the uh moving moving uh confidently into phase three has to be balanced with understanding that we, we just can't predict uh how this thing is gonna it's gonna end yeah i think uh, i think it's safe to say that i mean you've been in the business long enough and i have too to see um a couple of economic downturns where we've had to live through it uh, you know, both a U curve and maybe something that is uh, recovers a little bit quicker. Um, and during those times, there were certainly periods of uncertainty. But this seems to be such an extended time of uncertainty. I can understand how brands would be a little bit uh, frozen in terms of what the next thing to do. Although I'm with you, I think I think the, the the positivity seems to be coming through more and more. It feels different when you go out now, um, and so I'd much rather. Um, I'd much rather feel that way than to 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 be flinching about a second wave of COVID and what that would mean. Yeah. On that. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, we, you know, to continue along that kind of line of thinking, 
Um, you know, there's always been rumblings about big agencies dying. Um, you know, and um, and here we are in 2020 during this whole thing, and we, we there's still plenty of, uh, of big agencies that are doing great stuff. You know, BBDO, DDB, Leo Burnett. These are big organizations that you know everybody talked about them dying. Um, what do you think about those predictions? Why do you think they were wrong in the end that um, that the big agencies were somehow going to die and disappear? I mean, I don't think we're at the end of that story. So, uh, you know, they, they might not be wrong. <laughs> um, but, I, but I also think that, you know, whether it's a big or a small agency, it, you know, it's about the people and the relationships. And so um, if you have good people at an agency that that uh, that helps, you know, keep the clients there. So that's one thing. And then I would also say that, um, you know, there, there are clients looking for efficiencies globally. Um, and so that also puts the agency network at an advantage, you know, to a certain extent because they can offer people, um, you know, things that independents can't in that way. Um, and then the other thing I would say is that now, you know, not to make this whole conversation about COVID, but um, given the circumstances that we're in now, uh, there's a there's a certain comfort for me in being at a big um, agency network because I think you can weather storms like this a little bit a little bit easier. Um, again, there are certain uh, you know independent agencies that I'm thinking of who are great, but again rely on uh, you know a certain like a, an airline client for example, right? Um, and you know that's you know major part of their business for example. And so um, when you're bigger, you're a bit more diversified. And again, I think you have, um, you know, you have resources that independents don't. So I think, again, in a time like this, as much as we love to complain <laughs> about, mm -hmm. about our overlords, um, it's been a time where you actually see the benefit uh, in, being, in being with a, the bigger network. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think everybody looks at this um, time and thinks, um, you know, um, what's the new normal going to be? I'm not quite ready for that. I, I, I kind of wish we could just go back to the way, the way it was. But there are clearly things happening that um, companies are going to take forward because they've, they've seen that it's, it's worked. Just going to dovetail to the, this, um, this idea of, of um, um, working under different circumstances. I, always, I've, I, I don't know if I'm right about this, but I find that um, women are better at, at um, uh, taking this kind of thing on. Um, let's talk about the, the, the idea of raising a family in this business because women are in a unique position and, and you, you did that. Um, I'd love to get your, uh, your thoughts on that. Um, you know, my wife did the same thing, so I kind of know secondhand what, how challenging that was. Um, um, what was it like for you having to do that? Well, I mean, I'm still in it, you know, my, so I have, uh, you know, my oldest son is eight and then I have uh, twins who are five. Um, so no, it's, it's bananas, you know, it's, uh, it's crazy. But I also really, really like what I do. Oddly, I think that, um, I think that being a mom in a way made me, made me better at my job, you know, not just because of well, something that people do talk about a lot, which is that, you know, I understand, <laughs> understand the consumer in a certain right. way. Um, but but also um, that I appreciate my job. I think um, it's funny. I don't you know I don't know that before being at home for a year and uh, you know dealing with the all the stuff you deal with with kids. Uh, again, I, just, I actually don't know that I appreciated what was great about my my job and the um, the thinking and um, you know the adult <laughs> the adult interaction. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, no, it's crazy and, you know, it continues to be crazy. And my, you know, my husband works in marketing, so he's a, he's a client. Um, and so we both, we both are busy and, um, it's a constant balance and constant, you know, insanity. Um, and I, you know, the other thing that I would say, uh, not to get, not to get a plug in for DDB, but they, but I think, I think they realize that if they want to keep, um, parents, uh, as employees, and I think they they do the value in that. That there are certain, um, uh, you know, there's there's a certain give and take, and so uh, you know, I you know, I, I probably am a bit of a um, workaholic, but um, but I just find the times when um, when I'm not with my kids, and um, I would say that you know I'm at a company that uh, that accepts that and uh, accommodates it. So that's probably not true across the board, but that's definitely true for me. 
Have you guys talked at all about what you might take forward after this period? I, I'd be the first to admit that um, working remotely, particularly with clients um, and not being able to be face to face, I was I'm pretty skeptical on how it would work. I know our, I know we've been forced into this situation, so you don't have much of a choice. Yeah. But, but it's, it's worked. worked. It's worked much better than I thought it would. Yeah. And it seems as though companies are going to have kind of two ways to go. They're either going to embrace elements of it as they move forward and roll this out, or they're going to attempt to go back to business as usual. What have you guys talked about over there? Yeah, I mean, no, absolutely. I think so. What you said is uh, I completely agree with. It's worked way better than than I would have anticipated. Um, I've always thought, and I, I mean, I still do think to a certain extent that being able just to walk uh, you know, down the hall or, you know, over to the next desk or whatever. It's, there, there are major, major benefits to that. Um, but the, uh, you know, this happened at a good time because with with all the video, <laughs> the video conferences that are happening, which is a major, it's funny, I hadn't, um, you have conference calls all the time, but most of the time it's on the phone because you can't get the, you know, stupid boardroom video conference to work or whatever. Um, but the difference in engagement between somebody who's on video versus just being on the phone and checking your email and doing all that. Um, I think that has helped majorly um, in terms of collaboration and making things work with clients. Um, and so that's something that I can see one, I, I would say relatively small, but important way is that um, I've been working more closely with people in other markets. So again, like in our Edmonton or Vancouver office, because it's kind of the same thing as working with somebody in Toronto, you're not in the same office, you're going to be on uh, some kind of technology regardless. And so, um, so that's been great. Um, I think the other, you know, the other things that we are looking at is, um, uh, do people need to be in the office all the time, you know, to get the work done. Uh, and that's, again, that's something that I think every, every company, every sector, every, you know, everyone, everyone is looking at, uh, you know, I was just reading about, um, New York potentially being in a bit of trouble because um, they get most of their taxes from property taxes and a lot of the businesses will not necessarily go back to the same uh, the same size or the same um, you know even buildings as they were in before so anyway I do think everything everything can change um, and yeah I think what, what we've we've sort of had the mandate from the beginning of this to look at the things that we can learn and how you can get how you can get better um, so, uh, so yeah, as we look at going back, we're definitely taking that into account. I've, uh, I think in my experience, I, I never realized this, but I think the biggest part that I enjoy about this period is that there's no commute. Like you can actually just kind of put on, you know, put on your, your work hat and start minute one and, um, and you don't have to do this sort of like, you know, making the bus or getting into traffic and then traveling and then you know, going to the office and stuff. I think that part's been amazing. I think the other part that's kind of interesting is um, is that I think a lot of people see working at home as, as freedom, although you almost have to be more available than you were at work, you know? Like, no one wants to slack somebody and then have 40 minutes of, of, of you know, no, no one responding before they kind of go, where, where is this person? What are they doing, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's been really interesting. Yeah, no, 100%. And you also never go home, right? Like you're at, you're at work now 24 hours a day, also at home 24 hours a day. But um, yeah, that division or like that line between work and personal is, is obviously gotten very blurred. Um, so again, I think just different people are dealing with that in different ways. Some people are, some people like that more than other people do. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah. But I, the other thing that I have to say that I love is not making school lunches. I mean, having the kids at home <laughs> is insane. Uh, I definitely have learned uh, an important lesson about myself, which is that I am not a math teacher. Um, the homeschooling thing has been just, blah. but um, but just very, very, very happy not to be making the, uh, the school lunches and rushing rushing out the door. It's nice. Yeah, it's true. I find I, I find uh, um, at our house too that you uh, um, you really want to do help your your kids through everything, but there are some times where you just you're just not available to do it. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know about your kids. My kids are loving every second of this. They, they, they honestly, even the most social of them, I, I'm, I'm like, don't you miss your friends? And they're, and you know, he's like, yeah, I do miss them, but um, this is still better. Right. So it's, <laughs> so so it's, it's funny. funny that yeah. Um, I want to ask you about um, 
traditional media and and digital. Um, you know, you spent uh, a bunch of years at Tribal before you you went and at your post now. Was that a big difference between? Or is there a big difference between the interactive agency side of DDB and the more traditional side? Um, yeah, that's a it's uh, a sort of multi layered uh, question to answer. So, um, so I mean, Tribal recently has gotten sort of absorbed into Track, which is our data and CRM division. They do great work. Um, but you know, I think one of the things about um, about tribal sort of towards uh towards the end of my time there was that um you know the creative work that we were doing um is not something that uh creative people at any agency should be able to do so um you know one of the things that i did there was uh build a chat bot it's actually a cat bot um for a pet food company um that, that actually that got killed the cat got killed um but so but that's not that's not something that's not something that Again, that anyone at any any agency in the modern era, you know, should be able to do. So I think for tribal, um, you know, there, there were a lot of like really really strong backend capabilities. There was a um, there was an amazing UX team, um, you know, built around a client that that uh, don't they don't have anymore. Um, so uh, so again, so on one hand, I would say there was real specialization and real differences between tribal and GDB. But on the creative side. Um, I, again, I think there, I think there was the realization that the work, um, it, you know, is somewhat table stakes now, right? Everything, everything is digital. Um, so that, so that became, I think that, that, be, you know, that became a little bit of a, an identity crisis really. I mean, and the other thing, um, is that the creative teams in my, in my time there, uh, you know, and I was, I was there for, for a couple of years really before I started doing, um, mostly DDB work. But the creative teams um, were, it was like, a, it was, it was all cross pollinated. So you do, you would do one project with the DDB team, another project with the tribal team, a tribal team would go work on a DDB project and vice versa. The creative department was very, uh, was very integrated. Um, and again, I would say that the, the differences were more um, in the strong sort of technical capabilities of tribal, which are now still there, but they're just under, um, they're under track. Is there a lead dog there? Like, do you do you find that most of the time it's starting on the more general side and then and then flows down to interactive, or is it like is that like a project per project kind of thing? Yeah, it, well, it's funny. I mean, this is this there's like an ongoing I think conversation um, around this because uh, yeah, I think it's very I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of um, thinking in uh, let's call it video because there's no you know like difference between you know TV and pre roll and stuff, but um, thinking in that way first. And then having the you know the, the idea be based on, on other things fall out of that, I think it's a constant challenge to try to to put real um, you know digital thinking into like you know, to be baked into an idea. Um, I think it's also again it's like the lines have gotten pretty blurred because even when you're talking about quote unquote digital video is video is king even more than before you know like with um, you know with uh, YouTube and TikTok and you know the the ability to tell a story in you know, using moving images and audio um, is potentially more important than ever. Um, you need to understand the platforms and the um, you know best practices and stuff. But um, so that's that's yeah. Again, I think something that we're still trying to really to work out um, because also there's there are very very exciting tools that you can use um, that you know that that maybe haven't been uh, I'll use the word you know exploited <laughs> creatively enough. Um, that uh, that I would love to you know you know mediums that I would love to work more in. Um, so so yeah, I think it is like sort of an ongoing question. I think we also have passed the point where just you know uh, you know digital for its own sake is meaningful. You know, I think that um, again, like just just using a new tool isn't uh, isn't enough. <laughs> um, I think we were in maybe a weird period for a while where just by just by using new technology, it was an interesting idea. So again, I think we're past that where the idea really has to be, has to kind of come into it. Um, but I think we're all still trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the one thing that I've realized over this, you know, the last little while, of course, um, you know, we're doing a podcast right now. Um, I don't think I even thought about podcasts maybe until maybe a year and a half ago. And now I listen to several and, and uh, it's funny how some things seem to get traction and then all of a sudden 
somebody's doing it. Same go with same goes with the audiobooks. I think that there's there's a lot more people listening to books rather than reading them. But at, but at the same time, I think that there's this. Um, I think there's this overriding feeling that uh, human beings don't have any kind of attention span and can't read anything past a paragraph. And I feel that kind of hurts hurts your soul a little bit because, yeah. you know, uh, I think copywriters, it used to be this thing where copywriters might have a book and, um, you know, it would be all visually driven and you really want to know that the person could write. And it seems like more and more there's this idea that no one reads and I think we see a bit of atrophying in terms of that skill set. Um, I'd love to see it um, change, and I don't think that it's necessarily true. So when you talk about the mediums that you you know you'd like to um, to get more involved in, I'm, I'm, um, does it, that does that include mediums where you actually might get to write more than uh, two lines? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I, I actually think that writing is um, good. Writing is maybe more important than ever. I mean. You know that, and I know that we probably will reach a point at some point where it's all voice, um, you know, which is, or maybe not. Yeah. Uh, but, but no, I mean, I think good writing is like we're all we're all kind of reading all the time, whether it's on our phones or somewhere else. I do think the attention span thing uh, is is probably probably true, um, just because you know people are used to media where um, you know it, uh, the, so the stimulus uh, that uh, sort of goes by a mile a minute. Um, so that has to be impacting our brain. Um, but but yeah, no, I mean, I don't think that writing, of course, I would think this as a writer, but I, I don't think that good writing, um, I don't think we're past the time where it's important. I would say that it's more um, potentially important than ever. Um, you might have to be shorter. <laughs> 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 writing, which is actually, you know, I think it's harder. Um, but I also think that, I mean, one of the hard things right now um, is that the, the amount of time that you have to craft something um, has gone down. So, I mean, all of the, every, at every stage, every stage of the process has gone down, um, you know, in terms of time. Um, so, you know, I'm sure you know, the, you know, the expression it's, you know, 80% idea, 80% execution. Um, and I think we are in a time where, you know, the, again, like the craft isn't getting the same love. And I, maybe it's because everyone theoretically, you know, has the ability to use, uh, you know, Photoshop and editing tools. And so maybe it doesn't get the, respect that it used to. Um, and again, I also think that it's just a function of not not having a lot of time uh, to really to put the love in. So that goes for writing, too. Um, sorry, you were going to say something. I was going to say, you know, I, one of my questions was going to be, what's your biggest criticism of the business right now? And that that could be one of them. But um, yeah, is, is there other aspects of the business that you look at and you wish could be better? Like, what are we doing bad and what are we doing better? Yeah, I think, you know, I think what we just talked about is, is one of them. I don't, you know, I don't know that it's anyone's, um, anyone's fault. Right. <laughs> there, are, there are new realities for our clients. There are new realities for agencies. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, definitely. I think that's an area that, you know, that we have to figure out how to, how to still be great in, um, I, you know, and, and I, yeah, I also think that every, every industry has been disrupted, right? So we're not certainly the only ones, um, whether it's law or, Tells or you know what every, every industry has been disrupted. So um, I think I think there in time like that there are some people that do things really well and adapt, and others who don't. And I you know the same obviously is true in advertising, um, both of people and agencies. Um, so yeah, I think it's hard, hard to pinpoint something that that I wish we were doing. Um, but I do wish in an ideal world, uh, just having a bit more time to actually think through something um, and think about ideas. Uh, I think it has been a bit lost. Uh, and, and again, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's any one reason and I don't know anybody, anybody could have prevented it. Um, but I just, uh, yeah, resources are, you know, always a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Um, I ask all of all the guests that come on um, to give their advice for young creatives who are looking to break into the business. Um, what are your key insights for them to, um, to, to, to maybe emulate what you've yeah. done? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely people should do their homework. <laughs> um, I mean, in terms of, yeah, I, I mean, I, it's sort of a two-step question you asked me, but, um, so, you know, I've met with people that, uh, that, you, you know, don't 
seem to know anything about <laughs> the agency or our clients or what work we've done or anything like that. So that's a very, very basic one. Um, I would say, and this is a very obvious thing that I'm sure lots of people have said, which is that you kind of do have to know how to do everything now or be willing to learn how to do everything. So, you know, if you're an art director, you probably need to know how to animate you know, for example, not not well, um, but you know, you you need at least need some basic basic skills there. Um, and it, and yeah, and if you're a writer and you can also, um, you know, you can also do photography. That's great. Um, you know, we just did a project that we, for one of our clients that um, that we kind of, kind of shot ourselves um, through different people doing you know and using different uh, you know different iPhones and stuff. Um, and I just think that's where that's where we are. And so I think people that are, you know, I think people that are not willing to um, broaden the idea of what it means to be, uh, you know, a, a, a creative, and we still call people writers and art directors, and that's still, those are still important disciplines. Um, but I think that is, I think that's now necessary. I don't think it's, I don't think it's nice. I think it's, I think it's now necessary part of doing this. Um, I was going to ask you what you were excited about in the in the short short to medium term. Um, I, 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 without getting yourself into hot water with your current employer, what, what do you, what do you see for yourself, um, in the next, uh, six to 12 months? Yeah. I mean, well, okay. So well, the, the next six to 12 months, as we've talked about, obviously in the time that we're in is, um, is, is going up in the air. Um, but again, I mean, I am a very new ECD. So I, I mean, I'm still very excited about what we can do um but what you know what what i can help do or you know um it's still pretty exciting to me to help to help build something even though times right now are, are a bit crazy um and in terms of like looking forward uh looking forward to something um yeah it, you know i guess i'm at the moment really looking forward to you know being on a beach or something it's <laughs> 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 <That's> been crazy <laughs> um but yeah i know so i so, know it's, it's a good question but uh but you know, and I and like honestly, I think the other thing is again, like you were saying, using um, using what we're learning now and this weird thing we've been forced into um, to figure out how we can get better. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at it now, and I and I think uh, when when is it going to be? When are you going to be most comfortable going to a restaurant and stuff like that? I think I think for a lot of people right now, they're like, mm, not not really anytime soon. Yeah. But um, yeah, kind of not a fair question given the, how uncertain things are. But. Um, but listen, I want to thank you for, for coming on and sharing your uh, your insights and your thoughts on things. Um, it, it, yeah, it's been great to uh, great to chat with you for a little while here, and uh, and um, always great to see how people are dealing with uh, this, the, the current, current circumstances. circumstances. So, so thanks, thanks so much. much. Well, yeah, thank you so much. This episode has been brought to you by the National Advertising Challenge, North America's only brief-based challenge that sends winners to Cannes, France.